In Leander, Betty Sines responded to drought and loss of wildlife habitat with a water-conserving garden that's as pretty as it is beneficial. Charming outdoor living areas invite family and friends to gather under its historic oak tree. Birds, pollinators, and all kinds of valuable wildlife head to this haven that in 2005 was merely lawn when Betty bought the house. And basically it was just a regular yard. There was grass back here and my son and I were just sitting right here on the grass in the backyard one day. And we said, let's build a pond. And after that, then we built the pond and then we decided, oh, we'd build the patio. And then after that, we decided, oh, we'd build the cabana. A member of the Austin Pond Society, Betty got help from members Ed Henriksen and Bill Brister. I get all kinds of different wildlife that use the water, whether it's birds that take a bath in the bog, whether it's dragonflies, uh, damselflies, all different kinds of wildlife come and drink and use the water. To cover the elevated stonework, Betty chose fig ivy, a hardy tropical. It's certainly not a native or anything, but the reason it's there is because that was my first masonry job ever, and I'm not a very good mason. Now I could probably do something much better, even by myself, but it looked pretty bad. Flagstone replaced lawn near the house for outdoor dining and gathering. It took a few tries to craft their broad stone top dining table that withstands Texas weather. It's a very plain piece of remnant granite. I always buy remnants. I also added the extra supports, the cedar posts. They added a metal covered porch supported by mountain cedar posts to watch treasured pop-up rain showers. Another comfortably rustic destination is the Cabana. It's bar crafted from a Mexican blanket chest. Craigslist turned up the perfect accents. But they do have a little bit of history. You know, my family's been in Texas since the 1830s. Down close to Shiner is where one of my earliest ancestors settled and had a stagecoach stop between Indianola, where a lot of the Germans came in, and Austin in Hoheim, Texas, Valentine Ho. And then later, we did the Alamo. The Alamo is really a storage building and a greenhouse. And I hauled all the windows, all the doors, all the posts, and the roofing in my Prius V. Some people looked at me like I was really crazy when I had 14 and a half feet long posts in it. But all the seats lay down, and it was good. To bring sunlight into the winter greenhouse, they attach clear polycarbonate roofing panels to mountain cedar beams. Recycled windows set into the limestone and knotty alder sliding doors turned a functional space into a bright and cozy hangout. Exterior walls sport cushioned limestone benches. So I needed more seating because my husband loves to barbecue and you know we'll have big barbecues out here and parties. There just wasn't enough seating and you know here's a wall sitting there. The barbecue shed ensures that dinners never wash out for husband Raphael Sines. Betty tucked limestone compost beds in the nook behind the structures. Near the cabana, a limestone wicking bed, a built-in self-watering system, conserves water for edibles. Again, it double duties as extra seating where it's easy to snip fresh herbs. A lattice trellis supports champanelle grapes. And I did it mainly because you could see straight into my neighbor's bathroom window. So it was good for both of us. He has privacy and I didn't have to look in their bathroom window. And then I get grapes for jelly or wine. They're not a really good table grape, but they're good for jelly and wine and things like that. She takes advantage of the narrow side yard with her starter lean-to greenhouse constructed from recycled materials. A foundling piece of travertine became the tabletop for her potting bench. Mountain cedar supports thornless blackberries over annual edible crops. Outside the gate, she built another wicking bed in the front side yard. Along the shady perimeter, Betty layers perennials and annuals to support wildlife throughout the year. A member of the Native Plant Society, she focuses on natives that work in part sun and dappled shade. Leftover limestone chop block tidies the edges. For a garden perspective from another vantage, she tucked a limestone bench into the back corner. That was a piece of stone that Ed and I actually found, and we just put it on a couple of big um, limestone pieces, but we found that piece intact at the quarry we would always go to, which I still go to. It just looked perfect for a bench, and I've had some of my neighbors come over and take family pictures on that bench. You know, it's just kind of a nice place to sit. 
In front, she ripped out the lawn after the drought of 2011. That's when I did my front yard in that 110, 112 degree heat. And I kept thinking, you know, who stole my state and gave me Arizona? I had squirrels that um, would come and just lay down on my patio. They were just so hot. And they would come and drink from the pond. Betty installed a native stone pathway between serpentine swirls of red lava rock and white crushed limestone. Then she peppered it all with color, height, and texture, mostly with native plants. So I wanted to show people that you can have things blooming all year long, different colors, textures, patterns, and that's why I did the little swirls. You know, I wanted it to look interesting and fun and colorful and happy and make the bees and the butterflies and the birds happy. Grasses like side oats grandma, the state grass of Texas, attract painted buntings. Fruit trees shade the side strip. The front yard, and pretty much my whole yard, is to try to show people that they can do something creative with natives and plants that will help wildlife, whether it's pollinators, birds, that looks good, that looks attractive, doesn't use up our water supply. To take advantage of every raindrop, Betty installed rain barrels around the garden for easy access. In front, she added a 355-gallon cistern. My plants are kind of spoiled because I use the pond water and rain water to water them mainly, and that's a much better water. Along with water conservation, Betty's committed to preserving equally precious wildlife. But that was kind of the reasoning, you know, just to show you could do something really pretty and fun and save our water.